Welcome to Upon Further Review. I'm Josh Aubrey. Plenty to get to in this week's show. The Georgia Southern Eagles have now won three straight three straight Sun Belt games. They've all been down to the wire, but the Eagles are now three and two in league play, six and two overall. A big game coming up this week with Army. We'll send you back for some of those highlights from their victory over Texas State, 40 to 38, this past Saturday night at Paulson Stadium. As for the Statesboro Blue Devils, they've won a couple in a row as well. Statesboro has now won three in a row, and they are now uh, have been able to punch their ticket to the state playoffs. They're at least going to be the four seed. They have a chance of being the three seed as they'll play Glen Academy this week. But we'll take a look back at their big victory, an exciting win against Effingham County, the Southeast Bullock Yellow Jackets have won another game. Uh, they were able to go on the road over two hours up to uh, Conyers to take on Rockdale County, where they were able to come away with a shutout victory for Barrett Davis's group. And the Bullock Academy Gators continue to roll right along. They're now seven and one on the season. They went over to St. Andrews and pulled out a uh, 35 to nothing victory over the Lions. We'll have some highlights of that game, highlights from Statesboro and highlights from Georgia Southern, all that and more coming up on Upon Further Review. And a reminder before we go to break, hopefully you'll never be in an accident, but if so, please give our friends at the Sullivan Law Firm a call, 912-489-8888 or online at thesullivanlawfirm.com. The Medical Center Pharmacy on Grenade Street is proud to be your Health Mart Pharmacy in Statesboro. The Medical Center Pharmacy, locally owned and serving this community for 50 years, is open 364 days a year. The pharmacists at Medical Center know there's nothing more important than your family's well-being. That's why they take the time to know their customers, explain their medications, and answer any questions. The Medical Center Pharmacy, your Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Well, the Georgia Southern Eagles were looking for their third straight Sun Belt victory this past Saturday evening as they were taking on Texas State. Texas State coming in with only one win on the season, but had lost a couple of close ones. It ended up being a close one once again here this past Saturday. Let's send you out for some highlights. Senior day at Georgia Southern as the Eagles set to host Texas State. The Eagles still with two home games on the revised schedule, but Shy Wirtz and others honor prior to the game, and things start out well for the Eagles to snap over the punter's head. The Eagles take over inside the five. They cash in as Shy Wirtz calls his own number. Goes around the right side, and the Eagles take a 7-0 lead. On the ensuing kickoff is never a good thing to hear when you're a fan of the team who just scored because it usually means something bad. In this case, it's a 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by the Bobcats, Jeremiah Hadel, and we're tied at 7. The Eagle offense with a solid game here. Wesley Kennedy for 16 of his 81 yards in the game. Next, it's Wirtz with the 29-yard run. That touchdown also makes Wirtz the all-time leading rushing quarterback in the Sun Belt Conference. Rashad Bird then coming up with the interception. And Bird may need an acting agent after settling the personal foul. The Eagles only able to get three points off the turnover, though, as they extend the lead to 17-7 on the Alex Rayner field goal. The Bobcats rotating quarterbacks and Tyler Vitt struggling as he's picked off by Kendrick Duncan. Back on offense and trouble coming up as the pitch 
behind the runner, ends up on the ground, and Texas State takes over. We move to the second quarter at 17-7. The Bobcats try the fake punt, but the Eagles ready as Quinn Williams with the second interception of the game. Back on offense, and Wirtz will take off upfield for 36 of his 120 yards rushing in the game. This drive stalls, and it's Rayner from 41 yards away to make it a comfortable 20 to seven lead, but unfortunately, no leads comfortable this year at Georgia Southern. Calvin Hill, the 11 yard score to make it 20 to 14. Back on offense and Wirtz looking deep, but this one will be picked off by Jerron Morris. And a couple plays later, Vitt looking deep and he's got an open receiver in or silly Barber and Texas State grabs a 21 to 20 lead. The Eagle faithful can't believe what they're seeing. A big momentum changer here. Fourth and short, the Bobcats go for it, but the Eagles able to stuff it for a loss. And Georgia Southern takes over. The offense takes advantage. Wirtz, another nice run. This time he gets all the way down inside the five yard line. A personal foul moves it halfway to the goal. And then next, it's Wirtz keeping it and going around the left side for his third score of the game. 27 21 Eagles at the half. Second half action. And the Eagles get their third field goal of the game from Alex Rayner to go up 30-21. But once again, Texas State answers as Brady McBride, in at quarterback, drops this one in nicely to Javon Banks to trim the lead to 30-28. to The Eagle offense continues to pick up yardage. They'd rush for nearly 400 yards in the game. We move ahead to the fourth quarter. And a big play to start the quarter. Fourth and one. Coach Lunsford goes for it. And Logan Wright ahead for a first down. He'd have 103 yards rushing. Cleaning things up. It's Wesley Kennedy. As he goes around the right side untouched for the score. And it's a two possession game at 37-28. The Bobcats make it a single possession game though. As they get the short field goal. 37-31. The Eagle offense trying to respond. Wright breaks free for a 32-yard run to the 36. A huge play coming up. Third and 10 from the 40. Wirtz rolls right. He's hit as he throws. Incomplete pass, but it's called roughing the passer. Texas State's coaches not happy about this one. Once again, the Eagles unable to get into the end zone, but Rayner with his fourth field goal of the game makes it 40 to 31, a two possession game again, but takes the state moving downfield again. McBride directing traffic here and the Bobcats with the reception, they'd have over 300 yards of offense. This drive culminates in a McBride pass to a wide open Jamari Sharid for the touchdown and the lead cut to 40 to 38 with just under three minutes to go. The Eagle offense trying to run out the clock. A big run downfield here by Speedy LaRoche to midfield. And then Shy Wirtz able to put the game away with another first down run as the Eagles will escape with a 40 to 38 victory. After the game, we had a chance to talk with Coach Lunsford about the victory. We're making it a habit each and every week, and uh, but we're finding a way. Proud of our guys. Uh, first off, I want to talk about this senior class, it being senior day. Um, love these dudes. They are guys that have really stuck with this program and have believed from the start. And, um, you know, love them to death. Um, they're a huge reason why I'm the head football coach here. And I'm so glad that we were able to send them out with a victory today on senior day. As far as the game goes, um, you know, still uh, haven't played a complete game as a offense, defense, and special teams. Um, 
Special teams hurt us tonight with kickoffs and kickoff returns by them. Uh, defensively, um, I thought we were playing pretty good in the first half. Um, you know, they got the touchdown. They obviously got the kickoff return for a touchdown. Um, and then they got the touchdown after the turnover. And then they had a drive, um, which, you know, um, I thought we were playing fine. Um, second half, um, I would have liked to have seen us put them away um, and not make it close. Uh, very proud of our offense coming out and doing what they needed to do. Um, I think we were six for six in the red zone. Uh, still a couple times where I think, you know, we had to settle for a field goal and, um, and not get a touchdown. Um, very proud of the offense on that last drive because they did an awesome job putting that game away. Um, you know, defensively, we'll go back to work on it. Again, they've been playing great. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go look at the film. Um, we'll make sure that we continue to get, um, you know, get correct, get better. And, um, you know, we'll go try to win another one. First and foremost, I'm always going to be happy with a win. Always. Even the ugly ones, um, the pretty ones, all of them. I'm going to be happy with them because we work our butts off to try to get wins. And, and that's what we did. We had a tough week. Uh, we had a lot of weather issues. And our guys came to work every day, every day. We had a monsoon on Tuesday and they went to work. Wednesday, we didn't get outside. We had to go in the Hanner Field House and they went to work. Thursday, they went to work. Friday, they went to work. And then we got a W. Obviously, um, there's things that we got to clean up and we're going to go to work on that tomorrow. We're going to hold people accountable. We're going to hold co coaches accountable. Um, I'm going to hold myself accountable um, and we're going to try to get better. But I'm telling you what, I'd whole lot rather be trying to hold myself accountable on a win than a loss, no question. You know, obviously production was really awesome tonight. Um, 386 yards rushing, you know, 437 total yards. We had two 100 yard rushers, scored 40 points, two of two on fourth down, six of six in the red zone, 50% on third down conversions, um, possession time, 41 minutes, 19 seconds. We only punted one time. Um, the unfortunate part, I think, was the interception and the fumble. Um, you know, I think if we don't have those two things, that's probably a um, – we might have a 50-point night, you know. Um, but I do think they took a step forward. Um, I think they took a challenge on, um, you know, and we just got to continue to get better. You know, I think, uh, I think our guys are really taking a challenge and not just sitting back and going, man, this is just – they know they can be better. And if we can keep that mindset of just being – we just got to be better every time and not – not ever get complacent. I think that'll be great, but just proud of them. I mean, our defense has really played their butts off the last few weeks and really won football games for us. And we got in a shootout tonight and um, the offense came through for us. So um, that just shows you what type of team we are. Um, when, when one side's struggling, the other, the other one picks it up and uh, I'll take that anytime. Next up for the Eagles, a road trip to Army West Point up in New York coming up and former Georgia Southern head coach, Jeff Munkin, on Saturday, a noon kickoff there. We'll preview that one on our midweek show. Stay with us. Up next, some high school highlights. My Queensboro biker is Cheryl Quick. Blanchard Equipment Company has 16 locations. Queensboro has homegrown values just like us. They get heavily involved in every community. And that means strong customer service. They've been around a long time, just like John Deere. When you run across the bank like that, you stick with them. I sure would like to own one of these John Deere's. Well, we can sure make that happen. Oh, well. Queensboro is your community bank. Queensboro National Bank and Trust. The folks at the Georgia Southern University Store want all Eagle fans to know the Statesboro campus of the University Store will be open Saturday, September 12th from 11 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. and Saturday, September 19th from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. Both Paulson Stadium stores will be open for window and counter service with a selection of Georgia Southern apparel from the time the gates open until the end of halftime. Web orders from the full selection of Georgia Southern apparel, hats, gifts, and tailgating items may be ordered for free pickup at Paulson Stadium at the home side store during game day hours. Web orders must be placed by 1 p.m. on Friday for each of the first two home games. So don't forget, for all your game day and Georgia Southern needs, shop the University Store on the Georgia Southern campus. The Statesboro Blue Devils looking for their third straight victory and third straight region victory at that as they were hosting Effingham County. Head coach Buddy Holder coming into the game had told his team on Wednesday that he was stepping down at the end of the season. So they were 
uh, playing for a state playoff appearance as well. They had the same record as Statesboro High in this one. A shootout at Walmart Field. Let's send you back out for some highlights. Trust your eyes to the team that takes care of the Eagles. Professional Eye Care of Statesboro offers a full range of medical eye care, in addition to a wide assortment of glasses, sunglasses, and contact lenses to suit your style. I'm Dr. Horace Deal. Allow me or one of my associates to provide you with comprehensive medical eye care, and we can help you select from a variety of glasses and contact lenses here at Professional Eye Care of Statesboro. Statesboro High with the state championship lying in the balance as they were hosting Effingham County. Former Georgia Southern baseball standout Buddy Holder announcing earlier this week that he is stepping down as Effingham coach at the end of the season. And his players were playing inspired ball. Zach Garcia crossed the middle for a first down pass. And then after six straight passes, a nice play call here as Garcia goes up the middle 38 yards for the touchdown to make it 7 to nothing. The Blue Devil offense having a big game as well. Here, Andrell Grace shaking off a few tackles and taking off down the sidelines to about the 26. And a few plays later, as we go to the second quarter, the give to Grace, he fights his way in, tying the game at 7-all. The Rebels coming right back, though. Garcia with a great pump fake, and he'll find a wide open Garrison Klein, who goes 57 yards for the touchdown. The extra point failed. It was 13 to 7. Back come the Blue Devils. A nice run here by Jalen Michael as he gets ahead, fighting down inside the 20. And a few plays later, Ames Ratcliffe in the flat. Jordan Lovett, who turns it upfield, picking up a big first down. And then a few plays later, it's Ames Ratcliffe keeping it himself. He goes around the left side for the touchdown. And, and it's 14 to 13 Statesboro at the half. To the second half we go. And one of the rare times the Statesboro defense was able to stop Effingham. They get the ball back on offense and move downfield. Ratcliffe to give. Love it. Another nice run this time. Avoiding some tackles and getting into Rebel territory. And it's Ratcliffe keeping it himself and he fights his way through and gets flung into the end zone for the touchdown. 21 to 13 at this point. The Rebels right back. Garcia to Wallace. 21 19. And then on the Blue Devils next play from scrimmage, Jalen Michael up the middle and he's gone. 67 yards for the score, it's 28 to 19. On the Rebels first possession after that Statesboro store, Garcia hits Wallace streaking down the far sidelines for a 70 yard touchdown as the horn blows for the end of the third. 28-26, three touchdowns in a matter of 30 seconds. 28-26 at this point. Statesboro trying to extend their lead. A nice run by Andre Grace. Three Blue Devil backs going over 100 yards. Ratcliffe, Michael, and Grace. Here it's Ratcliffe getting all the way down, fighting his way to the one. And then from there, Grace able to go up over the top enough to break the plane. Statesboro up 38-26. The Rebels come back. Once again, another pump fake, and again, it's Garcia to Wallace. This makes it a two-point game. They try the onside kick with just over two and a half left, and they were successful. They get to the 32-yard line, and finally, the Blue Devil defense able to step up when they need to. Fourth and 10, they get some pressure. Garcia's pass incomplete, and Statesboro escapes with a 38-36 victory and clinch a spot in the state playoffs. So with the win, the Blue Devils are now in the state playoffs, whether they'll be the four or the three seed. It depends on if they're able to knock off Glen Academy Friday night at Walmart Field. That game taking place at 730. We'll preview that in our midweek show. All right, stay with us up next. Bullock Academy highlights. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
No Credit Refused isn't just an offer, it's a way of business and has been for over 100 years. No banks, no ridiculous credit requirements, just local Badcock store owners who treat you right and give you credit when others won't. It's never been easier to express your style and love your home. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro providing primary care for Statesboro area patients since 1998. Providing complete physicals, complete sports physicals, Medicare wellness exams, full diabetes treatment, and education from lifestyle changes to oral medications to insulin pump therapy, in-house dermatology, in-house circulation tests, and ultrasounds, and in-house labs. Featuring nurse practitioner Melissa Beasley, Family Internal Medicine of Statesboro can accommodate same day or next day appointments to serve your needs. Family Internal Medicine and Associates of Statesboro, where we care. Friday night lights to early morning deer stands, Anderson's General Store in Statesboro is your tailgating and hunting headquarters. Boots from Ariat, Georgia Boot, Irish Setter, Wolverine, and more, we have a pair for you. Check out our Costa and Ray-Ban sunglasses. And apparel from Columbia, Carhartt, and Drake. Dove, ducks, deer, we have all your hunting needs. And tailgate with a big green egg or Traeger grill, Pack in the flavor with delicious sauces and rubs. Anderson's General Store, a general store and so much more. Ready for fall? Us too at RJ Poe. Get ready to cheer on your favorite team in a new performance polo from Peter Millar, Southern Tide and AFCO. Ladies, we have the best brands and trending fashions. Complete your look with one of our best-selling shoe brands. Soft, on cloud and free people. Shop these brands and so much more at one of our three locations, RJ Pope Buckhead, Downtown, and Vidalia. Well, the Bullock Academy Gators looking to continue their role as they went on the road to take on St. Andrews for a region matchup. This one was all Gators. Let's send you out for some of the highlights. The Bullock Academy Gators on the road in Savannah taking on St. Andrews in a region matchup. This one all Gators. Rodney Hill off to the races. He goes in for the touchdown in the first quarter. Bullock Academy opens up a 7-0 lead. The Gator defense playing strong. Wesley Joyce with the interception. He makes a nice return getting to midfield. From there, it's Hill going around the right side. He fights his way just shy of the goal line. And then from there, Hill steps over the pile. Bullock Academy up 14 to nothing at this point. The Gator defense able to pitch yet another shutout. And they go on to win this one by a final count of 35 to nothing. So the win sets up the region championship game coming up here on Friday as they'll be taking on Pinewood. Pinewood lost this past Friday to Frederica. So a win for the Gators. They're definitely the number one seed, a loss, and it's a three-way tie. And we'll have to see how they end up breaking that tiebreaker. All right, that'll wrap things up for now. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.